just finishing up the whole Florida part of the trip. Um, kind of a nice big circle. We're in Jacksonville. That's our last uh, East Coast sunrise. Won't be seeing the Atlantic Ocean for a few months. So I uh, guess it's time to go west, young man, or there's nowhere to go except everywhere. Whatever awesome travel quote you want to use. But uh, let's get started. Excited. We are just leaving the Pensacola YMCA. We stopped here and did some grocery shopping at Winn-Dixie and then went to the Y. Got a little workout in, got a shower in. Um, slept last night in Marietta and uh, drove about two hours this morning and then came here and did this. Um, so the plan is to get some lunch and get a haircut now. So we're doing some real gambling now, boys. We're gonna pull into a random barber shop. Pensacola, Florida. That's got seven reviews on Google. So, couldn't, couldn't find anything on Reddit, Pensacola, on Barbershop. So, didn't really know anything else to look at. Anyone who's on the road a lot, let me know. You search for barbershops. That'd be sweet. Um, gonna get the, uh, the beard tamed a little bit. Um, so, Yesterday after Jacksonville, we did drove to Swanee and then hiked around a little bit. So drove like an hour and a half, hiked around a little bit, and then drove about an hour and a half, maybe an hour to like Tally. So I went to Tallahassee and um, stopped at a cool coffee shop called Lucky Goat. Pretty cool, actually. Uh, recommend it. And did about three hours of editing. Most of it was for Nick, though, uh, my buddy. So. Uh, his video already got pulled. Did a bunch of editing for about three hours, drove about 45 minutes, and ended up in Gretna, which is a poker room that I've never played in. And I went to school in Tallahassee, so figured I had to stop. And they had a 125 PLO game running, uh, which was pretty much shot every time to 10. And there were maybe three or four stacks over two grand. Had a 1 2 PLO game. That's, it's a one-two, bring in five PLO game. Playing huge. Uh, so we sat down. <laughs> we ran really, really well for about uh, three hours. Just, you know, top set holding, nuts holding, uh, combo draws holding, just running good. Um, and then we lost two big hands to end the session, and then we got out of there. But we still came away with the, with the profit, which is good. Uh, it was a good room, man. Good room. Uh, starting a guy I knew who I've played with in Daytona before, Daytona Beach. And he's like, what are you doing up here? And I was like, heading west. Like, what are you doing? I always thought he was from, like, Jacksonville or something. Um, but he's from Pensacola. So he's about, at least with my camper and the speed I go, he's about three hours away from that game. So it's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good game. Um, 
would like to put a big number, but that's okay. So uh, we're gonna go find a barbershop, get some lunch, and get into Biloxi this afternoon. We're about to get out of Florida, which is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, three weeks on the road and all of it in Florida. I'm done, I'm done. So in this hand, we look down at eight, nine, jack, queen, double suited. Um, under the gun, we open to 15 and we get four collars. Uh, the flop comes Jen. It rolls out 10, six, seven, uh, two clubs. So we have a open ended straight flush draw and the nut straight uh, and also a backdoor hard straw. We elect to lead pretty small, not potting it. Uh, lead 60. And we're looking for action here. Um, under the gun plus one kind of tanks for a minute. And then he uh, ends up making the call. And we get a quick call also from middle position. So going to the turn here, we're just hoping the board doesn't pair. And if it does roll off a club, that it's one of our straight flush outs. And all blanks, we're gonna fire hard. And we get lucky again. Uh, we roll out of five hearts. So now we have two uh, flush draws, still the nuts, and an open ended straight flush draw. Uh, the pot now is 255 with those two collars. So we elect to lead for 225, hoping to get some action. And they both quickly fold. Um, this is one of my first hands of the session and I like to show my cards here, which I don't think is ever a good idea, but there's a lot of money at this table and I don't want to get played back at light. I just want to kind of show that I'm not messing around and my bets mean, mean something. Break a nice little pot to start. In this hand, I uh, elect to open single suited kings, pretty weak kings actually, uh, under the gun to 15. Um, if I didn't have a tight image, I'd probably just be limping this hand because it really doesn't hold up well to a big three bet or to a, a late position pot. But we're no one three bets us, and we go seven ways to a flop. Um, pot's at $105, and we continue running good. We uh, flop king, deuce, four, uh, with two diamonds. So we flop top set, it checks to us, and we, we elect to lead for 45. Um, you can lead bigger here in live games, but since we're only getting action from low wraps and diamond draws, we're okay leading small and hoping that pocket deuces or pocket fours, uh, repots. Um, under the gun, plus one, immediately pots. Uh, and we're doing a little math here now. Um, it'd be hard for him not to have a flush draw or a wrap or pocket fours here. Um, but we do have a four blocker, which is actually bad for our hand too, because it's one of our full house outs. But um, I like betting small on the flop, even with the nuts, just because I feel like I used to get it in too often on the flop when I first started playing PLO. And um, the turn just, the turn is where the experienced good players, I believe, make their big bet. So um, I like to lead small here on the flop, hoping to make a big bet on the turn on any safe card. Um, but I'm okay with someone with $300 effective potting. Um, it's not that bad of a situation. Uh, it folds around to the, to the cutoff here, who's got like 115 in his hand and um, takes a second and calls. And we're gonna go ahead and repot the 60, uh, the $60 extra and just go ahead and get it in. Um, they only run it once here if there's more than two people in the hand. Uh, if not, a pie would have just called if he would have been much deeper. Um, anyways, we've got three ways. Ace and spade rolls out, so we're behind now. And river's a deuce, which is good as long as 
Under the gun plus one does not have pocket twos. We say we have kings full and everyone mucks. Um, the cutoff actually did show three five. So uh, yeah, the ace is a bad card, any six. Um, any diamond would have been bad too. But we bowed up on the river, so another nice pot. So in this hand, we look down at queen, jack, 10, four. Uh, double suited, one to queen high and one to 10 high. Uh, queen of hearts. Hearts to the queen, and diamonds to the 10. Uh, it limps around to us on the straddle for 10 and we're on the button and we elect just to call with this hand. Uh, the straddle, the straddler is actually a little tilted and he pots to 75. Um, under the gun plus one folds comes around to the hijack he elects to call for 75 the cutoff calls for 75 and I elect to call I thought about three betting for a second here but I think under the gun is going to continue 100% of the time so let's just wait and see if we connect, flop comes nine, nine, seven, two diamonds. So decent flop. Got a gut shot and a diamond draw. Um, under the gun immediately pots for 190, which is his all in. The hijack folds. And now the cutoff is having a decision here. And he's only got 125 behind. Um, our real decision here is we know that we have at least three outs, but if we think our diamonds are good, I think we have to go with the hand. Um, and against these two individual players, I just, I think, I think our diamonds could be good, our 10 high diamonds. And, um, I think one could have like six, five here or eight, six, or just like a naked 10, eight, um, so we elect to call for 190. We go three ways to the turn, and there's no more action. Um, and the turn is our gen card. It's eight of hearts. So we turn the nut straight and backdoor hearts. And the river runs out nine of clubs. Um, we claim jack 10 for the straight on a double paired board and both under the gun and the cutoff muck. So, still running real good. And that's why it's the great game of Pot Limit Omaha. You can handle the swings, man. It's hard to beat. So in this hand, we look down at uh, single suited aces. Uh, hearts. Um, there's a straddle on the button and there's two limps in front of us and we elect to raise to 40. Um, they're not that strong of aces but we're still happy to raise um, especially with the suit. Um, we get four collars and we go to the flop four ways. Um, pot's now $175. And the flop rolls out eight, seven, deuce with two hearts. So we flop the nut, flush draw, and uh, a pair of aces. So great flop. Um, kind of weird action in front of us, though. Um, under the gun jams for 70 and right away under the gun plus two pots he's playing about 1400 effective um, we got him covered but not by much so he pots at 385 and we have the nut flush draw um, a pot here to me means that we're most likely behind 
And if we're ahead, he's got a big wrap. Um, the old PLO me would have <laughs> repotted and got it all in. But um, I like to save that big bet for the turn. Um, it's unfortunate that under the gun limped uh, or under the gun led all in for 70 cents. We, since under the gun plus two's pot would have been a lot smaller, but uh, we call and the hijack actually comes along too for 160. So we're going four ways to a turn, but only two people can still act. And um, the pot is now almost $1,200. So we're paying, playing just over a thousand effective. So we have a pot size bet left. Um, and I think the repot is either a big wrap with hearts or uh, pocket eights, pocket sevens. So we're not that far ahead if we are even ahead, uh, which I don't think we are. So um, we really don't want to have to call a pot here on this turn. Um, so we use a little bit of live tails and say, hey, man, don't want to do it to you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll work out for us here. And we can see a river. Um, turn comes to six of spades, which is an awful card for all reps. It goes check, check, quick. And River rolls out a deuce of spades. Um, so our pair of aces and our not flush draw can't be good. Uh, the other big stack actually rolls over queen, seven, seven, deuce. So he bowed, he bowed it up on the river there. And um, probably wasn't going around the turn. So we're happy to only lose three to five on the hand.